Hey everybody, Melissa here. So I've been asked a couple times via email and comments how much it costs to start an online business. Well, that's a little bit tricky to answer because it all depends on what type of online business. Now, some of your costs are going to be the same, but others are going to be different depending on what it is you want to do. So today I'm going to show you how to create a startup budget for an online business in Microsoft Excel. And we're going to use the budget numbers for MelCompton.com and for my YouTube channel so you can get a better idea of what the actual cost might be for you to start yours. I cannot wait to show you how this works, so let's go ahead and get started. So here is our online business startup budget. Now, if you want to follow along, there is a link in the description so you can download this document. And then when we're finished, you can make any changes that you want to to the template and make it your own. So the title of this is just startup expenses. You can name it whatever you want. And then the name of the company in this case is Melissa Compton, but you'll put in the name of your company there. And then here's just some instructions to kind of guide you along the way when you're creating your budget. And it just talks about doing research and estimating as you go. Now, one thing to keep in mind so you don't get frustrated and overwhelmed, whether you're creating a startup budget, a monthly budget, or an annual budget, budgets are living and breathing, meaning they can change. Now, we don't want them to change wildly to where you say your startup is three grand and all of a sudden it's 10. But just expect some play in your budget and know that it doesn't have to be exact and it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just getting in the ballpark of what our expenses will be. So now let's look at our actual expenses. Over on the left, we're going to look at our expenses. And then over on the right in column F, these are links to the tools that I use and I recommend. And these are here for your reference. If you do happen to click on them, they are affiliate links. So at no cost to you, I'll get a small commission, which I really appreciate. But if you want to go a different route, that's totally okay too. You need to do whatever's best for you. No matter what type of business you're starting online, you're going to have to have a website. So you have to have a domain and web hosting first and foremost. Now, I use Bluehost, and I have for years because they're stable. Their web hosting is very affordable, especially for the first three years. And once I used them about 10 years ago, I never looked back. So if you notice, there's $300 in the web hosting, but there's nothing in the domain. That's because Bluehost includes one year of the domain, so that's not going to be a startup cost for you. And this $300 is for three years of hosting. So what will happen is you'll have hosting for three years, but next year you'll have to renew your domain, which is around 20 bucks or so. Now, web development. This can go one of two ways. If you notice here, mine says newspaper 12. You can hire this done and you can get this done through Fiverr or get it done through Upwork or hire an external developer but I do mine myself, and therefore I pay for Newspaper 12, which is a theme, and it is about $75 when you purchase the theme. Now, it's really $59, but even though I've been using Newspaper since it came out in 2013, I still pay for extra support because I can get myself lost. It's not that it's complicated, it's a me issue. <laughs> and what this is, is it's a drag and drop web design theme does, that does not require a coding background and I'll be doing tutorials on it in the future so you need to decide which way you want to go for your web development. WP Forms is an annual expense and what that allows you to do is if you have a contact form, if you have a newsletter that runs through WP Forms and allows you to create your form and connect it back to your email host, and what I mean by that is whoever's gathering your email addresses, whether it be constant contact, I use MailChimp, but this is going to be something that is an annual expense, and it's around $99. WP SMTP is an annual expense, and it's around $49. Now, what this allows you to do is integrate like Microsoft Outlook into your contact form, so that if someone sends you an email through your contact form, you can respond back 
and WPSMTP holds all of that together somehow. <laughs> so under your startup expenses for your website, that's roughly $523. So just real quick, Bluehost is for three years except for the domain. Your web development, if you go this route, is for the theme itself. WP Forms is annual and WP SMTP is annual. So the next thing we're going to look at is software. Now, your software and your website expenses are going to be about the same. Your software may be a little bit more because there is a lot more software that you're going to need. So as we talked earlier, I use MailChimp to gather all my email addresses and send email campaigns and things like that. And that runs about $13 a month. Now there's different tiers depending on how many subscribers you have. So this is a cost that while it's monthly, this can actually go up if you get more subscribers. But hey, that's a really good thing. Next is Office Productivity. Now I use Microsoft 365. You can use Google or something like that, but just keep in mind that Google is now charging for Google for Business. So I just use Microsoft 365 because the cost is about the same and I want access to SharePoint and things like that. So whichever route you go, that's up to you. For Microsoft Business, it's roughly $12.50 a month. Google is like 12. So whichever one you're more comfortable with. Now Canva I use for my YouTube thumbnails for Picture, some pictures on my website for my social media posts and I pay for it annually because Canva gives a really really good discount if you pay annually however if you can't do that then pay it monthly but Canva is very beneficial for content creation in blogs and on YouTube next is my AI assistant now not everybody uses AI I happen to because I need it <laughs> Now, what Write Blogger does is it has a bunch of built-in tools for blogging, like article writers, post outlines, post titles, post introductions, and many other things to help you write a blog. It also has SEO tools, keyword research, backlink checkers, meta descriptions. You have social tools, which helps a lot with YouTube. If you're going to do a YouTube channel, you can do your titles, ideas, descriptions. I just did a video on how it can take a YouTube video and turn it into a blog post. It can give you tweet ideas, Facebook posts, under sales tools, email subjects, freelance contracts, ad copy, real estate listings. And then under productivity tools, you can have summarize it. I use explain it to me like I'm five because I need that for me. <laughs> so as you can see, Write Blogger has a lot of tools built in that can really help you. Now, as far as the cost goes, it's $29.99 a month, but that is for unlimited access. Now, they truly mean unlimited because I accidentally kicked off a article. I do not know what I did, but it ended up being 17,000 words. And then I had some other stuff going on too. So it really is unlimited and it really is something that you might want to check out, especially if you're just starting out. It can really help you get past the blocks that you can have when you are creating your landing pages or blog posts or anything like that. And then I have Adobe. Now I just have Photoshop because I don't use the other parts of Adobe. And it's $9.99 a month. And the reason I use this is because there's some complex things that I need to do that Canva or some of the other ones cannot do. So I use Adobe for my more complex pictures and graphics and things like that. Now, if you're going to do a YouTube channel, you're gonna have to have a video editing program. And there's a lot of them out there. I use Filmora and I have for about 10 years. It's easy for me which is really important. And it is $79 perpetual. Let me kind of expand on that. Right now, I am on a version of Filmora that let's say it's version 12. I get every single update and everything to version 12 until they switch it to the next full updated release. I think the last time that happened was probably about maybe two or three years ago. So it's not something you're going to have to pay for all the time, but it's something you're going to have to keep in the back of your mind. Now, film stock, that is a different story. It is $13 a month. But what you get with the $13 a month is you get extra effects. You get extra transitions, extra stickers, and pro features. 
that you don't get with standard that I do use quite a bit. Now, TubeBuddy I pay for annually, and it's $145 a year. Now, what TubeBuddy does is TubeBuddy is all about channel lytics. So it is linked to YouTube, and you have a Keyword Explorer and SEO Studio. It helps you SEO your titles, your descriptions, your tags. It tells you the best time of day to publish. So it really helps make sure, if you're going to do a YouTube channel, that it is optimized and reaching as many people as it can and getting your brand out there. Thirsty Affiliates. Now what Thirsty Affiliates does is it protects your affiliate links. Once you have been blogging for a little while, doing your YouTube for a little while, and built an audience, you can do affiliate marketing. That is what these links are over here. But what Thirsty Affiliates does is it... I have to be careful using the word cloak because your affiliate marketing partners don't want your links cloaked. So that's not really what's happening, but it kind of is. <laughs> so as you see, this says mailcompton.com recommends Thirsty Affiliates. That is not my affiliate link assigned to me by Thirsty Affiliates. They've taken it. They've made it this so that when someone clicks on it, it takes them to the right place that shows my affiliate partner that it came from one of my referrals. Yoast SEO. So there is a lot of different SEO companies out there. You have Yoast, you have RFs, you have Simrush, and, and a bunch of others. I have used Yoast for about 10 years. If you haven't noticed, once I find something I like, I generally don't change. But I really like Yoast. Um, it is $99 a year per website. And what Yoast does is it integrates with your website. So if you come over into WordPress and you click on Yoast Premium, then it looks at how your website is SEO'd and it gives you different things that it thinks is a problem or things you can improve on and things that you have done right. It also looks at readability, transition words, passive voice, consecutive sentences, just to make sure that it's easy for your readers to understand when they're visiting your website. So let's look at operating expenses. We're an online business, so this is going to be a little bit different than if we were a physical business. We're not going to have a whole lot of operating expenses unless you are printing a lot. If you have an online Etsy shop or you're doing something through Shopify where you're actually printing out a product and sending it. But we're not going to have a whole lot for online. Now, if you notice, this says UPS store and you're probably thinking, what? <laughs> so there is some regulations out there, I can, who is, and some other things that, you know, your domain hosting service and even places like MailChimp that are doing your email campaigns are required to have a physical address for your business or your website. So you may not be an LLC, but you're still a website. So in their eyes, you're still a business and they have to have a physical address for you. So the reason UPS store is on here is I do not want my home address associated with I can or who is. So what I do is your UPS stores, I know in Kentucky they do, I think most of them do across the country, your staple stores, most of them, and even your United States post office has services that you can purchase to where they act as your physical address. So that's why this is on here and it is roughly $350 a year, and that is the physical address that I give to Bluehost and MailChimp and whoever else needs it as the address for my business. Another annual expense, if you get big enough to become an LLC, then you're going to have to have limited liability insurance. I don't know that I would do it at first. It actually depends on what you're doing for your business. I didn't at first because I do tutorials and I do blog post around tutorials so there was really no need to LLC but when I get into the area of selling online classes there is some liability there so it's best to LLC and get insurance to protect both you and your customers and then a business license with your secretary of state here in Kentucky I'm not required to have a business license because I'm a blog and everything is online. So check with your local state to see if your Secretary of State or your Attorney General requires you to have a business license. So hardware is pretty much a given. You're going to have to have a computer. You're going to have to have a keyboard. You're going to have to have a mouse. If you don't have one already, then that's something you're going to have to budget for in your startup budget. 
where I do YouTube tutorials, I had to have headphones. I had to have a Behringer box that hooks to my computer. So it just depends as far as hardware goes on what type of business you're going to start online as to what this is going to look like. And then we've got advertising and promotional expenses. Advertising, when I first started, I think I waited probably about six months, maybe a little bit longer before I did any advertising. Now, what I'm talking about is I would not take out Google ads at the beginning because that is expensive. But you can do some advertising through Facebook and you decide what that budget is and how much you spend. You can do some through Twitter, Instagram or anything like that. But I would recommend at the beginning really working on your SEO processes and continuously updating all of your blogs and your YouTube videos if you're doing that just to make sure that your brand is constantly being seen. And then I just left space for other expenses and you can put whatever you need to put in there. So our grand total is $3,398.97. Depending on what you change up here, what you do use, what you don't use, this is going to change. It may be more, it may be less, but just keep in mind, it's okay for it to fluctuate and don't let it overwhelm you. Now, a word of caution coming from personal experience. There are a lot of videos out there that says how to make $10,000 a month, 20, 30, 40, a million dollars a year, $2 million a year, how to get a thousand subscribers in two days. That's awesome. But if you're just starting out, it is totally overwhelming and I wanted to quit. So I decided to set myself a go and I would recommend you do the same thing. Now, this is not to say you're not going to hit it with everything that you have, but it's a realistic go. My first go was to break even because I was having to take money out of mine and my husband's personal account to cover the startup cost. So break even was my first go. Get that first subscriber to my newsletter. Get that first subscriber on YouTube. Then get five subscribers on each. Then 10. Baby steps. Otherwise, you're going to get overwhelmed and you're going to want to give up. And I don't want that for you. And now you have the basics and the template to create your startup budget and get out there, start hustling, and create your own path to success. And that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, be sure to click that subscribe button before you leave. And don't forget to hop on out to my website, melcompton.com, for written instructions for this tutorial and so much more. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.